Welcome to Firewall Management 201. I'm Professor Wall, and today we're going to be talking about some of the challenges and the possibilities that next generation firewalls bring us. So what are we talking about? We're talking about browsing the network. So traditionally, firewalls have allowed HTTP on port 80 to go through the firewall towards the internet. That is the way that we've been configuring our firewalls for many years because though that is the protocol and port that is used by web browsers when you browse the net. And this is generally known and everybody's doing it. Now, this also is known to the application writers and also to the malware writers. Everybody knows that port 80 is open outbound. What does this mean? Well, let's consider somebody working on a desktop in the organization and using it to connect to the internet. What could they be doing? Which applications are they using? Well, perhaps they are browsing the net and looking at news websites. Be in touch of what's going on in the world. That's usually considered a legitimate activity. But then they could be doing some other things. Perhaps that person is accessing their Facebook account. Perhaps they are reading their personal webmail account. These are personal activities. Is that a legitimate thing to do in the business place or not? It depends. Some organizations let their users do such things. Other organizations are more strict and frown upon this type of activity. Then we have different things that could be happening. Perhaps that same desktop is used to listen to web music. Web music can be a bandwidth hog. It could be using a lot of resources or maybe accessing YouTube. Again, possibly a bandwidth hog, lots of online video. Possibly that, per, that desktop is being used for file sharing. Now we're talking about not only uh, bandwidth, but also potential legal issues because maybe the content that's being shared is pirated um, or malicious or uh, uh, somehow undesirable. So these are activities that are less likely to be uh, approved in many organizations. Finally, there's the real bad stuff. Perhaps that same desktop, unknown to the user, is running a Trojan that is stealing information and sending it out to the network, either as part of an industrial espionage effort or as part of an illegal activity, of criminal activity, such as stealing credit card numbers and uh, uh, other content from that desktop. Possibly that desktop is owned by a botnet, it's part of a botnet, and it's being controlled by a botmaster somewhere out on the internet, and that machine is acting as a zombie and is being part of, taking part in the line of service attacks against other internet resources. So certainly these are malicious activities that every organization would like to forbid and filter out. Nonetheless, from a technical point of view, if we look at it from a firewall perspective, all of these different applications, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all send their traffic through the good old HTTP port 80 because the application writers know that that port is open. So their traffic will go out to the internet and will not be blocked. This poses a problem for us as firewall administrators. What do we do? We can either keep that port open and assume the risk that some of these applications that we don't want running will use that port, or we can block the port and disrupt business. And we have to deal with this grayscale of applications from the desirable all the way to the absolutely malicious, and we need to distinguish between them except that traditional firewalls are unable to do so because they can filter based on the ports and the protocols and they cannot distinguish between uh, legitimate traffic to undesirable traffic. Enter next generation firewalls. What next generation firewalls can do is they can filter based on the application inside the port. 
they can look at the traffic and determine which application is using that port right now, and they can make filtering decisions based on the identity of the application. This gives us, as administrators, more power to create granular access controls and make sure that only those applications that we approve of and that serve a reasonable purpose in our business, only those applications are allowed through the firewalls and other applications are blocked even though all of them are going through the same port. Now, next generation firewalls also have another advantage that we can use to address a different problem. And that is the problem of user mobility. So assume that this is not a desktop, this is a laptop that the user uses in their office. They take the same laptop and they also work from home. Or maybe they take it on the road and they use their laptop from their hotel or from their cafe through their hotspot and possibly they're connected through a, a VPN. But it's the same person using the same equipment, except that they're somewhere else. Another scenario is where the user takes their laptop and they walk around campus. Now they're connected to a different area. They're connected wirelessly through some internal hotspot. And they're connected to the network from that point. It's the same person using the same equipment but they get a different IP address every time because they're connecting through different directions. So each time they connect, whether it's from their uh, landline, uh, sorry, their, their uh, um, wired connection in their office or through a wireless connection inside the campus or from a remote office or from a hotspot on the internet, each time they connect, that same computer gets a different IP address. So from a firewall perspective, that filters, that makes filtering decisions based on IP addresses, each of these instances looks like a different machine. But we would like, in the ideal world, to be able to filter and make the same policy apply to all of these instances, because it's the same person and it's the same computer. It's just getting technically a different IP address every time. This is another place where next generation firewalls can assist us because a next generation firewall can make filtering decisions based on user identity. The same policy can apply to that laptop wherever it is connected to regardless of the IP address that it has at that instance because the same user is using it. So we can apply the same policy and it will follow the user around regardless of whether they're connecting internally or externally. This is in conjunction with the advantage of next generation firewalls that let them make filtering decisions based on application awareness. So we can see that next generation firewalls offer us two advantages that we can use to regain control of some aspects of firewall management. One is application awareness and the other is user identity based filtering. Using these new capabilities gives us on one hand much more power, but on the other hand they could create management issues that we need to deal with. We need to understand how to configure these things. And dealing with this type of issue is going to be the topic of our next section and sec next segment. Thank you very much.